School and Fish Secrets. Growing up on the water with fishing in their blood, Matt Airy and Brian Thrift have spent the last 10 years competing against the biggest names in professional bass fishing. Their success has landed them ranked among the top anglers in the world. If you're looking to become a better angler, then this show has all the answers. Join us and follow along to get actionable tips, tactics, and tried and true techniques directly from the pros. Welcome to Let's Talk Fish. He called you last year. Wait, I'll whisper before the mics are on. Because I don't want everybody to hear what I'm talking about. I'm going to start the show with, <laughs> I'm going to fix the sound because I totally dismantled this entire setup today when we did the testing. So the sound's not good? I don't know. I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> I, hope, I hope the sound's good. What's the good. sound sound like? Yeah, we have no idea. Y'all let us I'm know. Listening. Let I'm us listening. know. I'm my listening. uh. <laughs> <laughs> my feed's frozen. I mean, not the video. My uh, my comments are frozen. What's the last comment you got, Brian? Who's it from? Um, Daniel Jones. Okay, all right. I'm back up. To, I'm back up to speed. Mine may be frozen. I don't know. <clears throat> no, you're good. Well, if if, if mine, yeah, it could be frozen at the same time. <laughs> hey, Jen, thanks for tuning in. Daniel, thanks for tuning in. Alan Co. Chris, what's up, buddy? Looking forward to uh, that was wild. fishing with you. Was, I, I'm, a, was I'm a loud. loud I'm a loud kind of. I'm a loud kind of person. Very loud. You ought to know, after three years of this, Jeff, you ought to know you have to tune my mic down and tune Brian's mic up, okay? <laughs> and yours needs to go way up because you talk like a corpse. He doesn't say like a what? A corpse. What is that? He's so quiet. A, a corpse is a dead person. I know what that is, <laughs> but I, I don't know what it sounds like. Uh, I don't know what we got well, going I mean, on corpse, tonight. They don't talk. It, so Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to sit here and nod quiet. my head because I'm not in this conversation. <laughs> Everybody said it sounds good. So we do have a real – I'm surprised we only have 100 viewers, which we didn't put a post up today about our show. Apologies for that. Everybody was running around. <laughs> Jeff was testing a new platform that we uh, we thought about doing. Um, he's still working out some 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 little kinks and things with that. So uh, we, we might jump over. But what will be cool about that platform, and Jeff and I were talking about it earlier, and it will be a deal that um, – we'll be able to see questions that come in from everywhere, not just our Facebook page, but everywhere. Um, and it could be streamed across, uh, Lord knows how many platforms. Pretty much everywhere. You yeah, pretty much everywhere. Caption? How'd you get closed everywhere. captioning? I don't know. I don't know how I have that again. That That's drives me nuts. pretty cool. I forgot that was even an option. Dude, there's, there's features that apparently my phone turns on by <laughs> itself, and then they turn them off. My, All right, I, I feel like we're rambling. Truly are smartphones. We're, we're rambling. So uh, let's start off with a little treat. Don't we have a little treat? Oh yeah, we do have a little treat. We have a um, the a pulse fish lures Mr. Wilson feeding tonight. Absolutely, exactly. And we, I'll, we I'll do the honors. Get on, yeah, You're going to do the get honors. On get on that. Yeah. So do I'm the not, honors. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was like hand feeding feed, feeding him single minners before we went live tonight because <laughs> it's so much fun. It's just so much fun. It is fun. All right. And he's hungry. Mr. Wilson's always we hungry. Yes. The Pulse Fish Lures Bass Cam. This is your... He, he gets fed, what, twice a week, three times a week? About every three days. Every three days or so. And you can see he right he, he doesn't go hungry. No. He, is, uh, he does not go hungry. <laughs> he's ready. I don't want him to jump out, so this is... He's not... He's not... Look. God! <laughs> he's... Easy! Oh, my God. I'm going to get the minnows in there. <laughs> right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure, figure it out, Matt. Now, don't come out of there. Oh, he's coming. I, he's coming out. Way. He's going to jump out. That's just water. All right, I'm going to tease him a little bit. Whoop, there's a few. Oh, all right. I am a... Just, just dump them all. I want to see a melee. Just dump them all in. Let's see a, Let's see a full-on melee. Okay. There we go. <laughs> melee time. I think it confused him. Look at that. They're that way too fast. That's the, the goldfish just kind of, they just kind of lounge around until he gobbles them up. And they're like. Nah, he's getting them. He's getting them. He's, he, he must have, Jeff, Jeff. <laughs> I know what Jeff did. He's having a good, look at all the scales in there. See what happens to those minutes when you put a little G-juice in the, uh, in the, in, keeper, in the keeper bucket, in the bucket to keep them alive? Okay. Did he swallow a rock? Is he choking? Probably. I don't he's know. A break. He he did take a uh, break. Yeah, he's chewing. He's chowing down. Look at the gill. I mean the uh, scales. Scales, yeah. 
Oh, he's got so many in his mouth, man. He can't. That's what it is. Yeah, he's trying to choke them down. Well, good. I I, I hope the viewers are getting a good shot of that. Well, we'll go back. <laughs> oh, that was a good one right there. <laughs> I mean, Jeff, really? You're not going to give them? I mean, they can still hear us. They can watch him. Yeah. They, they'd probably rather see him eat. So eat. this is what the fish are doing in the fall when <laughs> you can't catch them. And they're schooling on the little bitty bait fish. This is exactly what's happening. And that's about the size of a lot of the thread fin they're eating right yes. now. All over and the there are millions of them. And it's hard to trick them. Because they eat till they can't eat anymore, and then they sit there on the bottom just like that. So tonight's show revolves around this exact scenario: fickle schooling fish in the fall, and we're going to show you a whole bunch of different baits. We have got a lot of baits. We've got a lot. A okay, lot so of baits. as soon as we started feeding him, we jumped up to a couple hundred viewers just like that. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody sharing the show, going, "Look at this guy! Look at this guy, Mister Wilson!" <laughs> and he also he also is like. He's a perfect representation. Oh, now he's chewing on a leaf. He's got to get his plants too. Look. <laughs> he's a perfect representation of a largemouth because he just sits on the bottom. Well, he, is, he get, is a largemouth. I know, but what I'm saying is, if if, 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 if it was a spot or a smallmouth, I just feel like he would he would act a little different. Like it's like they never stop. But you know, a largemouth he just lays on the bottom and waits for his food to swim right into his mouth. That's like, true. He got pretty active right off the bat, but I mean, yes. But now he's just chilling and he's like, oh look, there's one. There's one that, you know, one thing we've proven to ourselves, though, is they're not like cats. They won't eat themselves to death. He will eat till he can't eat no more, but it, it won't kill him. Right. Will a cat do that? I, I've heard they will. I don't really know if that's true or not. I don't think that's true. <clears throat> um, I don't know. So let's start off with some school and fish baits, tips, Can techniques. Can now or you want to keep it on here? He's getting low. Oh, look, he's got one hanging out of his mouth. Oh, never mind. Gone. All right. He's moving a little slow. Dude, it's funny because he chews them. It's like he chews them like we chew our food. Hmm. He's got to get them down, digest them. What kind of minnows are those, Jeff? Little shiners. Are they? Those don't look like it, the crappy it, minnows I used to buy no, from the Bash it looks like a little shiner, day. like a golden shiner. It does look just like a shiner, doesn't it? It really does. All right. Okay, all right. All right. On now, to the topic over. at hand. Right, let's switch over. <laughs> yep. Um... <laughs> Take, uh, oh, Trevor Alexander already has a school and fish. Thank secret. you. Yes. Pulse fish lures for the feeding. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Brian. You uh, so we have bags and uh, yeah, we both just kind of brung. I'll just kinda, a lot of different things. We'll just, just kind of <laughs> let's just go back and forth with it. Brian's way more organized than I am. Well, duh. and uh, <laughs> I think the viewers already know that. I'm going to get stuff out. We're going to throw it around, and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> if you got a question, shoot them to us. Um, we got all kinds of different little school and fish tricks tonight and things that have worked for us over the years this time of year. I'm going to go back to the Chickamauga Tournament. Absolutely nothing on this table worked there because I tried every single Ooh, I started to bring that bait. Last little bit the of little it. little riser bait? bait. Which one? Oh, that one? Yeah. yeah that's a good one. Um, all right, so let's uh, – Let's jump in. We'll, we'll kind of bounce back and forth, and yeah, and I mean, guys, we're look, we're learning every day. Every time we go out, we right. want to, we want to, uh, we want to hear from y'all. And Trevor Alexander always threw us in a little tip. He said, uh, already threw us in a little tip. He said, take a square bill and burn it as fast as you can. Uh, it makes it hunt all over the place, and they'll smash it. And and that's a good thought. And I think one of the keys, and we're going to talk about it tonight, is um, I actually brung something similar to that that I'm going to talk about a very similar technique i've used to catch them before but when you're talking about burning a bait through these fickle schooling fish the biggest thing is there is you're not giving them a long enough time to figure out what it is exactly and that's, that's the key that's the key on a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about tonight yeah um different to, ways to rig everything yes the whole um, key to me is when you're trying to catch those fickle schooling fish that are eating very small bait it's almost like you want something that's big and flashy that's going to stand out, and then you want something that you don't think the fish can see, something that's just going to – you just don't think they'll see because I think that gets a lot of bites because it, they just – I don't know where my thought process is going with this. I can't even explain it. But I want a very translucent bait, a clear bait that – you know, if it's on top of the fish before they have a chance to react to it, they can't see it from a long ways away. So when they get close enough to decide whether it's real or not, it's too late. They're already committed to eating it. And if that makes sense. Yeah. And <laughs> well, and 95% of the time to touch on what Brian just said, we're talking about really clear water situations. Cause when those yes. fish are, are key in on that little bitty bait, 
typically the water is is relatively clear um when they when it gets a little dirtier in the fall it's actually makes the fish a little bit more accessible and a little bit more vulnerable and to me they're easier to catch then yes um but that being said, this uh, most of everything that we're going to talk about tonight is is clear water application type stuff for those schooling fish that are dialed into those little bitty thread fin, right? Um, so or and, just small forage in general, right? Small forage, and there's I'm gonna I think Matt will agree with this, and I think we can break this down into two different categories if you follow along with me here. I'm trying. All right, follow along, Matt. All right, so. When we're, I'm talking those schooling fish that are hard to catch, to me, you've got two different types of those schooling fish. You've got types that are centered around structure, like a point or grass or a creek channel bend, <clears throat> where the fish stay in that area and they come up periodically around a bridge column. Any type of structure that those fish are staying on, and the only time they feed is when a school of bait comes overhead and they'll come up and bust and you can catch them. So you've got those fish that school and stay around a piece of structure, and then you've got open water schooling fish that there is absolutely no telling where they're going to come up at. They may come up right beside the boat one minute and come up 150 yards away five minutes later, <clears throat> and you've got to have a bait that you can throw a really long ways that's going to still mimic that little forage, which to me that's one of the, the most trying times to catch schooling fish is when they're chasing little bait in open water and not centered or, or you know staying around a piece of structure yeah i i'll agree with that kevin clark said if a white fluke doesn't work he just goes home and pours him a whiskey there you go i mean that <laughs> to each his own that's not a bad plan it's not a bad plan um all right so let's talk about one of brian and i's number one go-to baits all right um Go with it. It's something that we've used over the years. Uh, it kind of flies under the radar. More and more people are getting to know about it now. If you don't know about it, you need to put some in your box. I know a lot of guys capitalize on the discount code that we passed out, but um, it is it is the Pulse Fish Jig. Yes. It is the Pulse Jig. And it, this is what I brought tonight is the 8th ounce version. The 8th ounce version to mimic that smaller bait. It's got a little bit tighter wobble. It's a little bit more subtle. Um, you can cast it a long ways, and we like to put, I mean, I, I use the little Lunker Hunt Bentos that you see here. Um, they're just little fork tail minnows, but the whole key, I know Brian likes the uh, the Domeki, um the Armour Shad. Armour Shad, And yeah. the biggest thing is I don't, I don't typically use paddle tails with this type bait because that lip and that front of that pulse jig does all the work for me. I, it's got a really, really, really subtle shimmy. You can burn it which we were talking about earlier. Uh, this bait act, actually, if you watch the chick event, Stetson was catching some schooling fish. I was going to say, Stetson was catching I, on something very yeah, similar. Yeah, I don't know what brand he was using, what kind he was using, but it was almost identical to what I'm holding right here. Um, that was one of the only things. Now, his fish, we, they, they weren't in the middle of that grass like we were talking about. His fish were actually uh, relating more to just open water back in a pocket behind a marina. Uh, I believe it was behind a marina, if I'm not mistaken. I, I have no um, idea. But anyway, you can see it on Bass on the Bass Live coverage. And he was throwing something very similar to this. So these little baits right here have been a big player for fall schooling fish for years and years and years and years. And the eighth ounce version is kind of my go-to size. Um, <clears throat> we'll try to go through real quick on when we, like, our setups for all these baits. We won't get into detail. Yeah. But, I mean, I throw these strictly on spinning rods. I like braid with a fluorocarbon leader. Um, I like 10-pound braid, no bigger than that, uh, just to get the distance. Brian knows what kind of leaders we like to use. He brought some tonight. Right, yeah. One thing I brought that I really wanted to touch on was when you're trying to catch these finicky fish on using these small baits, like a lot of what we're going to be showing you tonight is small baits that you really got to think out of the box to kind of figure out how to use them and how to make them work, and it is a very situational bite. But one key component to the setup when you're using a spinning rod, I like to use the P-Line Shinsei leader material. It's a very high-end fluorocarbon. This is six-pound test. They don't even offer it in bigger spools. You know, this is a, what is it, a 30-yard, 20, 27-yard spool. That's the biggest spool you can get in it. It's strictly a leader material, but it's a great, strong, very premium fluorocarbon that's very clear. And easy, I, easy to tie to your braid. That's right, a big it's deal easy too. to tie to your braid. But I truly believe this gets you more bites in very clear water in finicky fish situations. So hey, that's the P-Line Shinsei fluorocarbon. Could 
could we possibly turn that camera around, Jeff? And because they're wanting a close up, that way we don't have to get up and walk, and then we can just switch back to that camera. So Ooh, we that's can a good call. Show them a close up of these. I, well, I'm just seeing a couple comments, and we'll yeah. see close ups of these baits, and I'm sure they can't see them from that distance. But <laughs> Jeff's going to work on. Literally going to be. <laughs> Let, let's see oh, how no, this works. You might. You might. You work, might work wanna, hard, Jeff. You might want to move it. Uh, move it a little closer. I'm looking here. A little closer. A little closer. Here, I'll watch the feed. Oh, can you see it? And I can hold your baits as you talk about them. Oh, that's perfect right there. You see them good? Yep. All right, cool. right in front of your face like that when you're on that. That's perfect. All right, so those are those are the uh, the pulse jigs, the 8-ounce pulse jigs. They have little Lunker Hunt bentos on the back of them. Um, you know, those are killers in the fall, and, and Brian was telling you about Hey, hold later, those Ryan. up one more second. I okay. want to draw attention to one other thing on these, these two pulse fish baits. If you'll notice, Matt's got two different head colors. The lead head is a more natural looking color, and that will get more bites in really clear water when those fish are finicky versus a bright painted white head. <clears throat> yeah, and, and I should have talked about that because when I actually go, this is more of a translucent bait on the back too. Yes. That goes back to kind of talking about the, the fast retrieves and things. So that that is the color that I actually turn to uh, once the sun gets up, bright sunny conditions, calm water, things like that. I'll throw the white first thing in the morning. Yes. That's usually one of the only times I throw the white or last light in the evenings if you're on a school and bite then, which we're not fishing tournaments unless you're fishing night tournaments that time of year. But that's that's the two that's really the only two colors that I yeah, throw. Yeah, that, that's that's the only the two really head colors I carry in any bait, whether it's the pulse fish head, um the Domeki underspin head, anything like that. I'll have a natural lead head and then a white painted head just to to have those two different you know, presentations for low light and for bright sun. And pul Pulse Fish Lures, guys, PulseFishLures.com is the website. Um, go check them out. If you don't have a lot of their heads, it's definitely something you need to add to your arsenal this time of year. Um, let's talk about what you want to jump into something. Uh, Ryan, I'll let you go. Yeah, we'll, we can, back and we'll forth. just kind of keep on the And the if we have something that get complements into each other, then we'll, yeah. then we'll do both of them. I'll let you hold them up. So. All right. My first two... Is kind of a combination of bladed baits, we'll call it. Which one you want to talk about first so I can hold it? Uh, we'll go with the Domeki first. So this is the Domeki Underspan. This is the small size. It's got a, uh, I think it's a two-alt hook, and it's got the three-inch Domeki Armor Shad on there. And you can see it's just like the Pulse Fish Lure. I've got a natural lead head. That's a Tennessee shad-colored bait. This very translucent. You can see the bottom of the bait's translucent, almost see-through. I want something that's the fish aren't going to know it's fake until it's too late, and they've already committed to eating that bait. And the cool thing about this underspin is the blade they use is very, very thin, and it will spin with very little forward movement. So it'll actually spin on a pendulum when you're if you're just letting it fall and kind of pendulum back to the boat. And as slow as you can wind it, that blade's going to spin the entire time. And that three-inch armor shad swim bait swims really great. You can see how thin the material is and how soft the tail is. It swims great at a slow speed retrieve. And that's having that blade separated with that barrel swivel too. Right. Has a lot to do with the the way that thing's able to turn with with ease and we'll talk about blade baits and how important it is when those things are on a when you're tight lining them or, or letting them fall how important it is for those blades to actually have some action we got several several other blade baits we're going to talk about right this one's not i wouldn't call this a blade bait really no it's a bladed jig yeah. i guess <laughs> yeah so this is a, a new product from chatterbait that came out this year it's the well will leaf bladed chatterbait don't know the exact name of it i don't remember it but this is something that we've kind of been doing for... <laughs> sure they can find it. Right? Yeah, but actually, I mean, I've been throwing this bait for quite a number of years, five or six years. And it's just a, you know, a chatterbait. It's a jig head. That's a 3 16 ounce. It's got a wheel leaf blade, which gives you a tighter wobble. And it kind of mimics the action of the fish pulse lures, really, or the pulse fish lures. It kind of gives you a tight, kind of tight wiggle and gives you just the mimic of that smaller bait fish and i've got a pro blue three inch Domeki armor shad on there not a paddle tail i don't like to throw a paddle tail when i'm throwing this bait because just like matt talked about with the pulse fish bait it takes the action away from the blade well and what happens is like the uh on the front of the pulse uh the pulse jig or the front of this deal 
or the front of a chatterbait a lot of times when you're throwing it um, with that bladed front, that blade's displacing water, so it's right. throwing the it, action of the paddle tail off. Right, it, it kills the action of the paddle tail. So that's kind of my two go-tos as far as, you know, a casting and winding bait. I'll put it back over here. <clears throat> All right. But also, you you could see when Matt was holding that up that that pro blue Demiki armor shad, you know, it's a very translucent color. Something that those fish have got to get really close to to see what it is, and by that time they're already committed. And I fully believe that gets you more bites. Um, since we just kind of rolled off of a blade bait, let's jump into some of the tail spins and things like that. And I know you have some different blade baits too. Yeah, I've got a. Um, I've got one right here. I'll show two right here. Um, actually, let's see. Well, this is the hatch spin. I've talked about that a little bit on the show before. It's something that the one thing I like about this is this is Lunker Hunt's little magic bean. And one thing I like about these little blade baits is you can cast them an absolute mile. We've talked about how critical that is for uh, schooling fish this time of year. This is more of a natural, like a common shiner pattern. And I don't actually don't have, but I, I like. <laughs> it's funny, Brian said, you know, plain lead. This is kind of just a little bluegill pattern, but um. These are the uh, the little big eyes. Uh, they call them the big eyes by Lunker Hunt, and imagine that because they got the big giant eyes on there. Uh, but there's a lead. There's actually a natural, more of a natural lead color right. in that deal, and I like that a lot. Really, what what the way I'm catching them on these little tail spins, and they're like the old school little Georges to an extent. Um, I'm letting them go out there, and I'm I'm actually pumping them through the school and fish, and and I'm 99% of my bites are on on a tight line on the fall when that blade just enough line to give it where I can feel the bite, but where that blade actually turns. Yeah, on. where it's pendulum back towards the bottom. Correct. Yep, and that creates a lot of uh, a lot of reaction bites in those school and fish. I mean that's that's just one of many things that you try. Sometimes they won't they either won't touch it or they'll annihilate it. So, but I like the castability of those blade baits. Um, you have something very similar Yeah, to Demiki's also got a blade bait that's called the Axe Blade. And this is a three-quarter ounce blade bait, but something that's very unique to this that no other blade bait has is a rear hook on it. If you'll notice... I see that, and it's on. It's actually It's only. actually made. The hook is built around the swivel, and they've got a plastic collar that holds that double-barbed hook. It's kind of, it looks like a miniature frog hook. But it is affixed to the back where you've got a hook back there on that blade if you get short strikers. And you can throw this bait an absolute mile. Like I said, it weighs three quarters of an ounce, spins really good. I fish it just like Matt was talking about fishing the big eye, but that's the Demiki axe blade, and that's that's one of my favorites. All but, right. but that little deal with that back hook, that's yeah, and you, you'd be surprised how many fish you catch on that back hook. I've put some stinger hooks on a some underspans and stuff in the past and i haven't caught that many on them's hooks yeah very rarely have i caught many but I see, see that the, the way yeah the effective. way that's made is it's kind of the same principle because or a, a different principle of putting a trailer hook on back there at the blade because the hook's not actually on the blade it's just right at the start of the blade so it doesn't interfere at all with the way the blade spins and it work it still lets it work properly they, uh, <laughs> I saw a question on here, so I'm going to jump on it. Kevin Clark said, do they still make a front runner? Well, this is actually an old school. I've only got two or three of them, actually. <laughs> this is an old homemade front runner. Yes, I think War Eagle or Bill Norman still makes a front runner. Yeah, well, I know War Eagle used to. <laughs> There's still a couple companies out there that but make one. The, the thing about a front runner is you can you can make anything a front runner, you like really Matt's can. fixing to show you right yeah. here. <laughs> and this is a little homemade balsa torpedo that's hand painted, just not like we talking about. I, I hate to sound like a broken record, just a natural shad pattern. Got one. I've changed the hook on it multiple times, but it's a Gamagatsu treble on it. Um, it's basically just a little torpedo bait, and it's got an eye on the front and an eye on the back. And you're using that as a front runner. You're going to tie your main line here. Tie your leader line here and whatever pop are walking bait, whatever you prefer on the back. Okay, I usually do 8 to 12 inches behind this bait. Um, seems to give it the action it needs. And that little blade, it acts just like a baby torpedo. Uh, different front runners have different actions and different purposes. Uh, check your check your tournament rules to make sure that's allowed. Yeah, let, because, because it is essentially two baits that's in right. one. I mean, that's it's kind of right. like the double fluke rig or something like that. Correct. <laughs> and um, so just, just be careful there. But those front runners... Man, I tell you, and, and I've been in situations, not recently, but in years past, to where I've caught most of the fish on the front runner. Um, yep. The big bait gets their attention, and, but it's not exactly what they want. 
so they actually go after the front runner because it mat- it's matching the hatch more or less. Right. Um, so I touched on the front runner. Um, we've got a couple different small dirt baits. Yeah, I'm gonna brought. I want to talk about one more blade style bait before we move on to, right. to kind of get out of the the lead game, I guess. Yeah, we won't go into the salt. We got different soft plastics. But, yeah, um, we'll go with that too. Actually, <laughs> we'll go I'm, I'm gonna baits. go through too. We'll go through the blade baits. Yeah, and and I saw somebody make a comment. I actually I knew Brian was bringing a spoon tonight. I didn't bring a spoon, but I know all the spoons are are big time players with schooling fish, and Fishing those spoons, don't forget, I've seen Brian throw it out there and just wind the thing across the top of the water. That's what this one's designed for. <laughs> okay, so I've also <laughs> seen spoons, and you can do that one. You can vertically fish it too. Yes. But I've also seen like the little war eagles and things like that where guys have thrown them up there. I'm talking about on shallow schooling fish now, like six, yeah. seven, eight foot yeah. or less, and just ripped like a three-eighths or a half-ounce spoon. I saw that comment earlier, and, and that can be a big deal. So, But, you know, there again, it, it, it's all about – making those fish react to something that uh, appears natural and matches the hatch on what they're after. Um, all, all right. right. Next, we got the Domeki. They probably heard us. The backdrop spoon. <laughs> and, and guys, take, take notice to, to a lot of the baits that we're holding up. Now, we might have brought, not, not have brought all the right colors that we <laughs> normally throw, but a lot of them that we do have with us are very natural. Yeah. Silvers, lead color, you know, shad colors, things like that. Yep. That is the Domeki Backdrop Spoon. It's uh, right around three quarters of an ounce. It's in grams. I hadn't converted it over, but you can throw that thing a mile. And one of the cool things about it is if you cast it out and just hold your rod tip kind of at a 45 and wind it at about a medium speed, it will only actually go down about eight or 10 inches and it will actually swim side to side. And it looks just like one of those little bait fish, little minnows, you know, a couple of inches under the water swimming. Matt, if you'll spin that around where they can see the keel on the front of it. Oh, I'm going to have to hold it horizontally, maybe they can see it. <laughs> so Probably. Yeah, so on the, the bottom side of it, the part that's going to be under the water, and the bait's going to kind of rock back and forth on that keel and make it look just like an injured swimming shad. And that's one of the things that makes this spoon so effective is because you can throw it so far and you can wind it and make it imitate those small bait fish. And I've caught a ton of doubles on that thing with the two small little stinger hooks and versus using treble hooks on it so all right so um matt's seen that in action before at lake wachita when they were schooling yeah and you've got one more blade <laughs> bait we're gonna talk about yeah the the other one is the little small Demiki vault this comes in two sizes this is the, the swivel so you can see it yeah there. this is the small one but i think it's a little three eighths ounce but that thing is absolutely deadly on any schooling fish and I tried, I've actually caught fish fishing it vertical like a drop shot over brush piles, like around spotted bass and stuff. The only trouble with that is you catch so many crappies on it. But that that is a little fish catching machine well, we right there. Like the I'm too. telling you, that's a little fish catching machine right there. The vault. The vault. Oh, um, I saw a comment. Somebody said, what's the best bait for raping nature? All of them. He said all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um... All right, uh, and, and that's the other good thing about spoons, too, is the castability. Guys, keep in mind that a lot of times in school and fish situations, being able to make a long cast and having the right setup right. is a big, big deal. All right, let's like, jump. Like with that spoon, the, the, the thing you want to think about when you're throwing the baits, like uh, the blade bait we both talked about in that spoon, is you want to throw it on a high-speed reel. Like I use a Revo Rocket, and it's a 10 to 1 gear ratio. And a lot of times I'm throwing these baits, even though they're three-quarters ounce, I'll be throwing them on 12-pound P-Line Tactical Fluorocarbon just so I can throw them farther and hold more line on the spool. But you need that 10 to 1 gear ratio reel when they come up schooling, you know, 100 yards from the boat and you bomb a cast to them and miss them by 30 feet. You can get it back to the boat real quick and get another cast because – that always happens to me. <laughs> uh, Daniel Kim had a <laughs> little tip for the backdrop there. Said if you tie on the backside of the backdrop, the action changes to more of a flutter. Why are you just now telling me that, Daniel? Did you know that? I did not <laughs> know that. I <laughs> so did not know that. Nobody knows who Daniel Kim is. He is Daniel is Daniel is Mr. Mr. Demeke. Demeke. <laughs> um, Daniel Trevor, is Demeke Trevor, what, USA. <laughs> uh, what was he referring to? He said, "Do you ever?" I just saw this question. Sorry, do you ever uh, move the position of the swivel? I oh, do he not. might have been talking about the vault. Yeah, he's yeah. talking about the vault. I do not. I always leave it in that middle hole, 
and I don't know why. I just what I always do. It seems to work. But evidently, Daniel says if you tie to the back side of it, it makes it work like a flutter spoon. So I'm gonna have to try that. Now, thank you, Daniel. You taught me something tonight. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, so let's go, before we get into soft plastics, let's go to hard baits. Um, all right, we got a lot of those. Yeah, I, got a lot, got, I got a lot of those. Quite a few. Brian brought a, a bunch of different little things. Um, I, I've got, I only brought a couple, but I brought one, and people, um, they, two years ago, nobody knew about this bait. Um, now, lots of people are starting to know about it. The biggest thing is knowing how to fish it. Um, and I'll tell you one thing that I do too, and this is, this is actually a pretty translucent color and I like this color, but this is, does any, did anybody know what that bait right there is? I'm sure they've seen it lately. It's popped up on a Scott Martin video here recently from Lake Hartwell. Yep. Um, it's a big deal. Okay. This is a school and fish killer. When those fish are schooled on small shad in the fall, um, this is a riser bait. Okay. This is the only company that makes one out there that I'm aware of is Jackal. Um, I think so, and, yeah. And I, I believe that's the only company that actually has one that's similar to this. But what makes this bait unique is if you see the, the lip on the front, uh, basically what it does is it makes this – I throw this thing on the spinning tackle. I throw it on straight braid, 10-pound braid. Okay? When I throw it out there, I'm keeping my rod tip up, and I'm winding it real fast. And sometimes I'm shaking my rod tip. But what you, what that thing's imitating is it looks exactly like one of those single shad that got singled out from the school, and it's actually jumping and hopping and porpoising. And the heron do that real yeah. bad at Hartwell, too. Yeah. Um, and that might have been why it was so key for yeah. those boys down there. But I've caught them in several different situations on a riser bait. Um, when they're singling those little bitty bait fish out over open water, it works extremely well. And uh, it's just something different. Now, I'll take I'll actually take a couple of their colors, and this is one of them you can do it to. And take a spoon and actually clean all that paint off there, and it's perfectly clear. Back to what Brian was saying, it's yep. perfectly clear. Um, that translucent, clear color is a big deal because when they see it skipping across the top of the water, they can't tell what it is, and they just attack it. Um, very, very true. So the riser bait, that's a bit, that's a big, that's a, uh, that's a big deal. Um, this is a little jerk bait from Lunker Hunt and I love it cause it's clear. Once again, uh, <laughs> this is called the mosquito. Um, Brian has a couple baits I know that are, that are similar. Um, they're different lengths, different actions, but this thing dives zero to three feet. Um, work it on a super, super fast retrieve. Don't give them time to look at it. And I like it cause it's got two treble hooks on it. So, um, that the riser bait, a lot of the different baits that we throw, Brian's going to show you a couple right now. Yeah. I've got a um, couple more here. And, and when you, when you're having fish swat at stuff like that, they're not really committing to it. You know, having those <laughs> two trebles can make a big deal. And I apologize because a lot of the baits I have, I'm not sure are available anymore. <laughs> And, uh, Y'all tell us if you want us to show you stuff that's not available. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Dan Daniel's watching, so y'all can get on him and, and uh, see if he'll bring them back. <laughs> oh, this is a Demiki bait that's not available anymore? I, I'm pretty sure it's not available. But yes, this is a... Well, Daniel's on, so he'll let us know. <laughs> this is a small Demiki jerk bait. It's called the <laughs> SoQL 55. But it's a... Uh, did it's, you say that right? I think I did. I'm not sure. Pretty sure. How do you say that, Jeff? <laughs> How, How do you would, say it, Daniel? How would you say it? <laughs> so kill, I guess. So kill. That's what I said. Exactly. Well, translate that. What does that mean? That means big schooling bass whacker. That's <laughs> what that means. Okay, sounds perfect. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Nature raver. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a little jerk bait Demiki made. And I, I don't know if they, they ever sold in the U.S. I just... I was privileged enough to get a couple of them. But it, you can see it's a great translucent color. It's a deep diver. It'll dive about five or six feet. And I throw it on a spinning rod with six or eight pound leader. It's got two treble hooks, but it's the perfect little size to mimic those very small bait fish. So that, that's one of them. And I apologize if I'm showing you baits that you can't then get anymore. So kill. There we go. So kill. So he separated I that said out. it right. Did I say it right? I think so. Huh. All right. So what we got next, Brian? <laughs> so next, we got another little bait that was never for sale in the U.S. <laughs> Don't worry, y'all. This one doesn't have any teeth marks on it. Well, no. That is the Disco crankbait from Demiki. Disco? D-I-S-C-O? Yes. Disco. Hmm. So it's a little bitty crankbait. And that it's clear. Absolutely smokes schooling fish. But there's a, a little trick to the way you've got to work it. Um, you don't just straight wind it. Like uh, if, you, if you can, 
I know everybody's seen the groups of bait fish that get back in the creeks up shallow on top of the water, and when something spooks them, they kind of fly everywhere out of the water. But the way I fish this bait is I burn it up to the to till the bait gets inside the ball of bait, and then I'll take my rod and pop the tip up. And what that actually does with yeah. this bait, it causes it to kick up on its side, and the next three or four cranks you make, that bait will run sideways instead of running down. And it looks like one of those shad kicked up on its side and running out away from the school instead of going down. That's somewhat injured. Yes. So, so if you picture that bait, you know, it's diving down. When you pop your rod tip up, it'll kick up on its side and, you know, swim off to the side instead of swimming straight down. And that, that is a cool little trick to, to get those finicky fish to feed when they're, you know, chasing those little bitty shad right there. He said it's called the hummingbird and we discontinued it. Okay, the jerk bait's called the hummingbird, and it's been discontinued. <laughs> I got, I got a couple. All right, next is another bait that may or may not be discontinued. <laughs> you, 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 you said yourself, Mike could find this one on eBay. Yeah. So this was a a bait that's is old and it's been around for a while. I don't know if it's still made, but it, it's called a near nothing. It is a solid plastic, like, poured bait with a, you know, a lead in the tail. You can cast it an absolute mile. Yeah, they can't tell how heavy that bait is, but that thing probably yeah, weighs that a half th ounce. Yeah, if not more. But you can throw it a mile. It's, as you can see, it's tr very transparent, so pretty much all the fish are going to see when you're working it fast is that feather, and they're going to come up and hit it most of the time. But I caught a lot of fish on this in summertime school and fish situations. And, uh, again, I think it's it's called a near nothing. And what's interesting to me, you told me it sinks. It does sink. It does not float. And you can throw it a mile because I can tell you right now you can throw that thing a mile and <laughs> the back of it. But so how do you work it? I work it on top because it acts like the Domeki backdrop spoon. The way the front of it's cupped, when you start your retrieve, it comes to the surface. All right, so is that? Have we covered all the hard baits? You got? No, little, I got lots more. Okay, you got a little. Uh, what? Grab something they can buy. <laughs> Do me a favor and grab something they can buy. What about the little jointed swim bait? I don't think they still make them anymore. Really? I don't think they. Do. Oh, I know where we can get them, Jeff. That that's the old school, uh, little spro. Jointed yeah, that's swim bait. A spro, 100%. Yeah, that's a spro uh, BBZ shad thing. Baby, 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 BBBBZ. Yeah, the little <laughs> itty bitty baby one. Uh, but, I like the but trouble that, you got on it, though. That's a good little schooling fish bait, too. Good to burn, jointed, swims like a kind of like a Sabille, like a little magic minnow. Somewhat, yeah, what? Yeah, very, very similar. similar. So that's it. And let's see what else I got you can't find. We'll just do everything I got you can't get, and then we'll talk about something you can. <laughs> a, little, uh, a little baby pop bars. They're so cute. So this is another little Domeki bait that <laughs> you can't get. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be some companies in the crappy world it is a, there that's got some stuff. Yeah, it's about like a little teeny tiny crappy pop bar. Like a baby. Doesn't Rebel have a little tiny one? Yeah. About this so. size, maybe. <laughs> but do they have a clear one? No, exactly. That's what you need. You need a clear that, one. And I actually caught them on, not that exact one, but one that's in my box that I fish out of that looks just like that one. You remember when we had the cup at the Three Rivers catching those little small mouth? Yeah, and you're trying to catch a pound and a half kicker? Yes. Yeah. That little thing right there was money. I could see that. I could see that. So just a little baby top water. All right. But uh, I guess everybody's picking up on the trend of the translucent baits here. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> we don't even need to show that, do we? No. I mean, they don't. <laughs> you can't get it. Why show it? Yeah. All right. We'll just... I'm protecting y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that is my last hard bait that Matt will let me show. And everybody knows what that is. <laughs> I'm sure. That's old school, but it'll catch them. Yes, sir. That is a fish catcher from way back. That's a good one. The clear, hidden, tiny torpedo. The old tiny torpedo, and it's clear. Go figure. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, Cameron Coon said Rebel does have a clear one that size. Okay. In their crappy, there you go. In their crappy stuff. So apparently, there you uh, go. I think it's in their crappy stuff. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> All right. So let's jump into soft plastics a little bit. We talked about kind of some of the stuff we use on the back of the pulse jigs. Um 
the Domeki Armor Shads, the Lunker Hunt Bentos. Um, <clears throat> the paddle tail stuff, we go to more either the underspins or we just use a straight jig head. Um, I will show you. This is Lunker Hunt's uh, finesse swim bait. Um, this thing, and, and we use these tinies. They're, they're like 2.8 Kitex to an extent. Um, this is uh, the natural pumpkin color, but it's more of a translucent on the bottom with a little bit of purple flake in it. A little bit, I mean, it looks like a little bitty thread fin is what it looks like. What I like about their little uh, finesse swim baits is they, they've got a flat front, so they fit yeah, really. Yeah, I was noticing that. Yeah, so, so they, flit, they fit really nicely. I mean, one thing you don't want to use is use a jig head that's so small that it, it, it kind of sits inside that circle. You can trim it up a little bit if you need to, but this is designed to fit nicely on most jig heads, anywhere from, you know, quarter ounce. Th I, I mean, sometimes I'm throwing three eighths, but I'll oh, throw a yeah. quarter, I'll throw an eighth. Um, I don't typically go much smaller than a three sixteenth or an eighth for schooling fish just for castability reasons. But um, everybody knows how to fish these little baits um, if you've thrown the little Kitex and things like that. This is the finesse swim bait from Lunker Hunt. A lot of different applications. I use it on an open hook with a jig head depending on the weight. And I just use a lead color jig head with pretty much all my swim baits. Yeah, I do, um, too. I do as well. That's just something. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to hit your phone there. That's another color right there, okay? That's called Sexy Melon. It's kind of like a baby bass, but it's translucent on the bottom. Got a little bit of green and black flake in the back. Um, but there again, they're translucent baits. Um, jump over to some grubs. Brian brought a grub. He yeah, brought, brought an old brought, school grub. This is the... I almost put this thing in the bag, <laughs> and I'm glad you brought it because it's so... Like, it's, like so, it's, it's a, so old school. And I school. think it's a, like our area of the country. Is but kinda, it works everywhere. Yeah, but this like that's the only place I've ever seen anybody use it. That and dude, I, I know Mr. Twister made the ones that I bought back in the day. Yeah. Is that what this is? I have no idea. Okay, so I used to buy them and you still can in bulk. All I know is we call it the Green Goblin. The Green Goblin. <laughs> um so that's basically just a chartreuse. I'd call it chartreuse pepper, chartreuse sparkle. It's translucent chartreuse, that's a key. It's translucent chartreuse with a little bit of silver sparkle in it on a lead jig head. There you go, and that's a, and you just cast it and wind it slow like yep. you would a you know a swim bait on a jig. You get head. a lot of bites on this thing, tight lining it too. You, you do, like, you like really on the do. fall. So um, this is a bait too, and let's talk about. I know we're talking about school of fish in the fall, but this is a bait too that has caught, especially around here over the years. Yeah, of winter time, a lot of giant fish in the winter time, and I know guys always think, it's especially such a when myth. the shad start dying off when yep. the water temps get cold enough, you start getting a shad die off. Super Gin Clear Water, I got two colors tied on. That one right there and just a pearl white, kind of an iridescent white. But that color right there seems to work better for me overall in super clear water. Now, guys, I know there's some people out there that probably watch this show <laughs> that think chartreuse doesn't work in super gin clear water, but I promise you it does. I'm one of them, but I will throw that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, or when you're dealing with smallmouth, of course. Right. Uh, all right, let's talk about if you've – I've done some articles over the years. Brian's done some articles. There's been a lot of guys around Lake Norman, things like that, that do uh, um, uh, some school and fish stuff, tips and techniques. But this has been a staple around here. This is actually dates all the way back to, shoot, probably 15 years ago, if not more. If not longer than yeah, that. Yeah, uh, I don't know. We're getting old, so I lose track of time. Yeah. This is the old... Charlie Brewer Charlie Slider Brewer Slider Grub. Grub okay. <laughs> this is a white pearl silver. This is probably one of my personal favorites. It's kind of a translucent. Definitely got a clear tail on it. Got a little bit of flake in it. Um, one thing, and here's another slider grub that he made. This one's jointed, got a little bit different action. You see, I've the got the double action slider. The double action slider was that actually? That's one actually one? what it's okay. called. So that was uh, that was another one that I threw back in the day. Um, the key to these things is I'm not fishing them typically like I am, like the the, the little grub that Brian just showed. Um, I like to throw them on a straight shank hook. I like to add in a variety of ways a little bit of weight to it just so you can cast a little bit further. But the key is waking those things across the top of the water really quick to make it look like a fleeing shad, and a lot of times they that's just they just can't stand it. Um, open hook, 99.9, yep. if not 100% of the time. Just a straight shank hook, thread straight it on shank. it. One alt, one alt, two alt, straight shank, yep. and, uh, and expose that hook. Now, one thing I do, that particular bait, I actually throw on a – Brian may be different, but I actually throw it on six pound floor clear. Um, yeah, that floor clear's got a coating on it. Seems to be um, it casts, casts great. It's insane how good that stuff yeah. casts on. A it's very line. inexpensive. <laughs> uh, it's fluorocarbon coated, um, and I'll I throw it on six pound line. Those that those that application, unless you're going up to like a three sixteenth quarter ounce jig head or eight ounce jig head, you need to use. Um, four to six pound line and that's a big deal when you're throwing it with that straight shank hook with hardly basically no weight in it um 
But the key is to make that thing wake across the top of the water. And I throw it on a seven foot four spinning rod. Mm -hmm. um, I like that longer rod. I like something that's a something with a really soft tip when you're using that, right? You know, four to six pound line. Yep. Um, so that's kind of the soft baits that I brought to show you. Um, Brian's um, got a couple different. Yeah, ones too. I mean, a lot of the ones I brought were on. You know, some of the jig heads, the three inch Demiki Armor Shad swim bait, the three inch Demiki Armor Shad were kind of the main two I had on some of the jig heads. But another cool little bait is called the Bing Demiki makes. Yeah, Matt, to show it here, it's kind of a hollow bedly straight minnow, and uh, that you can one. See the tail on the back. Yeah. And it's all hollow. Yeah, it's all hollow. But that is a great bait for fishing the same technique as Matt was talking about with the slider grub. I just stick it, thread it on a straight shank hook, leave the hook down coming out of the bottom. And you pretty much just cast it as far as you can and give it no action. Just wind it on top of the water and it makes a V on top of the water just like one of those little minnows that get out to itself and swim near the surface. It just makes a small V just kind of like a wake bait would, but you just wind it slow on the surface. And those finicky schooling fish absolutely love a bait that, that does that. I could see twitching that thing too real fast. Oh, yeah. You like, could yeah, you, you know, could just, work this like a fluke style or like the five-inch uh, armor shad. You could twitch it, do whatever. <laughs> um, so I saw a question. Actually brung some even smaller bings. Dan, Dan, Dan wanted to know, do the larger fish still school or are you better off targeting isolated wood? In those areas for them here's the thing about schooling fish in the fall to me a lot of the areas you go to yes there's some giant schooling in certain places but a lot of those fish school size fish can be really good limit fillers um but in tough events like we've had uh in the past two or three tournaments and some of the cups that yeah. we fished those schooling fish become kicker fish you know yeah. i mean they a two and there's pounder, three and four pounders mixed there in are a lot there are and, and they can be a little bit trickier to catch sometimes but to answer your question uh dan if, if i feel like you know the fish that are schooling can can offer me offer me an opportunity to win or at least fill my limit where i can go take some more risks then i'm not going to think twice about it but to, you know the larger fish i still always believe that you know you're not going to see schooling fish with 10 pounders mixed in yeah those 10 pounders to me the eights nines tens elevens i've never been anywhere in the country yeah, where i've seen they don't school right they're loners that's right that's they're right they're sitting in a brush pile eating crappy right <laughs> so to answer your question dan if you want to catch one of those giant nomads um you're gonna have to get away from those schooling fish more often than not um all right you were i got uh, one more little trick with the the the, the bing and here matt if you want to hold that up and then take one out where they can see it yep this is the, oh todd todd just jumped on here said pulse jig is daily this time of year he must have missed the first yeah. 30 minutes where, of our where show are you being todd when we talked about the pulse jig <laughs> um oh the the, the, the Bing. This is the Demiki Bing. I thought Bing. you were saying Bean. B i n g. Bing. 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 I can't even hold this thing. I can't show it to him. <laughs> so like, this is a very situational. It's too small. <laughs> this is an inch and a half bait, and if any of you are familiar with the the casting cork, you've got to have that to throw this bait. So when they're feeding on those very very little shad and popping cork, yeah, the or, flo or floating fly, yeah, casting cork, popping cork, whatever you want to call it. That's what you have to have to f throw this for bass. Now, you can fish it for crappie all day long and catch them on it, you know, just normally. But when those fish are schooling, I pair this up with a popping cork or casting cork on a bait caster where I can get it to them. And y you catch so many fish on this when they will not bite anything else. But I'm going to stress this is my last dish effort. If nothing else works, I throw that and it will work. But it's just so small and so aggravating to throw that that's the last ditch effort but if you absolutely can't get them to bite anything they will bite that little dude right there todd said him and new or walk, walking i found i just figured out a great way to hold this thing perfect that is good. <laughs> um todd <laughs> said him and new are working on tackle for the bass open on cherokee good luck to you fellas number one and number does two. it start tomorrow Ma thursday i thought it starts thursday I no maybe y'all should have tuned into the beginning of the show where y'all could actually, you know, see some. I would imagine Todd's tricks. probably cooked a delicious meal. <laughs> no, they're working on tackle. He just well, well maybe earlier at the beginning of the show. Todd's Todd's a, he, he is he he gave me some. I ain't tried the special <laughs> seasoning yet, Todd, but I'm I'm getting close. Um, I haven't been home in time with, with enough spare time to cook out at the house. But next time I do, I'm I'm uh, definitely uh, 
Definitely going to try that new season now. Old family recipe, you know, the stuff that he gave us. Yeah, yeah I know. I don't even know what's in it. He wouldn't tell me. He had <laughs> There's a bottle me. of it right there. Yeah. Matter of fact, there is, isn't there? Jeff was just talking about that. If I night. remember right, I'm thinking, like, he said it was, like, 70 bucks to make a couple of those little bottles. Like, all the different. $70? I think so. It was it was that wow. outrageous. Wow. Wow. Um, all right, so let's let's jump back into some questions. I don't know how we are on time, Jeff. Uh, seven fifty three. <laughs> wow, right on time. Pretty dang good. We picked the exact right <laughs> amount of baits to to try. Um, <laughs> you you want to give them a drive by of the bait that has not been shown? Which one? The one I didn't show. A drive by of it? Yeah, just a. You think we should show it? Somebody said show it. Well, I, I mean, it's nothing. It's not a secret bait. It's not a secret just a different bait. Color, a color that we've talked about all night, <laughs> basically. And it's mine. Matt's gonna try to take it. Everybody knows what that is. It's just a different color. That's the 90, isn't it? No, that is... Uh, like an in-betweener? That's not a plopper. The eyes look a little different. Yeah. Oh, okay. So who makes it? I don't know. Are you I, I swear to you, I do not know. Okay. Did you just buy it on eBay or something? No, I, it was given to me, and they didn't divulge where Did it came Did they make from. it themselves? No. Okay. It was given to them. <laughs> That's a pretty good friend. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's the only one in the world you can have it. <laughs> I've got it. So it's basically like a plopper. It looks to me yeah. like a like a little bit bigger than a ninety. The tail size looks the same as a ninety. Yes, it does. So is the is the action about similar to a ninety? Yes, very similar. Okay, um, moves a little more water. <laughs> couple but things it's clear. We didn't talk about, and we should have done this because I have some old school. I haven't broken out in years. But the popping cork and old floating fly deal, the floating fly yeah. deal, not as much school of fish, but the popping cork deal. And I want to say that originated around the Clarks Hill area, maybe. I think I was it was it. But... I have no idea. I so, know I know the the <clears throat> float and fly deal, that was East Tennessee. Yeah. That's more of a wintertime technique, yeah. not really a school of fish deal. And I shouldn't have said floating fly. That really, that <laughs> yeah, really Cameron didn't. said that's a wish.com plopper. It very well may be. Wish.com It very plopper. well may be. <laughs> the, the eyes on it actually look like a chopo. It does kind of. The eyes on it look like a chopo. Yeah, I've had those for five or six years. <laughs> Maybe it was a prototype chopo. It may have been. I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> um, all right, so the, uh, the, the, the popping cork is something I've used it very little, but it actually it does work very well in certain situations. The whole concept of that deal, guys, you can Google it because we don't have. I've got a couple corks at the house, but I'd honestly and it it doesn't really. You don't really want a popping cork though. Well, the so the one that I used was it was it was cone shaped at the top and it had a big lip on it. Almost Arnold like, Ledford made it. No, I bought these at Clark's Hill. So I've got one reason. Arnold Ledford made for me. Before <laughs> it he might be something away. similar, but this thing actually when you would pop it, that's what would draw the fish up. The fly behind it was actually a white. Um, Made out of cork, fly body that was painted with little eyes on it. Oh yeah, and it had a little like a little streamer. Yes, type. yeah, yes, yeah. I know it's so. About. And I caught uh, just a handful of fish on it. But the popping, the actual cork is what would draw attention to those schooling fish. And you would tie a leader behind that cork with that little float, that little fly that actually was made of cork or some kind of foam. And um, I couldn't tell you exactly what it was made by, but that was that was a deal back in the day to catch fickle schooling fish too. <laughs> Um, yeah, popping cork. That's right, Jeremy. That's a big deal in red fishing and things like yeah. that. I know. But the cool thing about it is you're pretty much just using that for weight to get your bait out there. It doesn't have to be, you know, a popping cork. I mean, you could throw something like a, a pencil popper or, you know, your, any walking bait, any bait that you can cast a long ways, take the back treble hook off, tie a leader to it, and put your trailing bait behind it like that Demiki Bing. It's the same exact thing. Wouldn't you say? <clears throat> yes, very simple. Because I've done just that. Um, so, somebody said awesome camera work, Jeff. <laughs> he, he, he's on it. Well, I, he's I just, on it. I've been just trying to flip back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing good. Um, the three inch. So I was going to ask what was the smallest magic swimmer they ever made. Spencer McCrary said they made a three inch. Uh, they may still make a three inch. I, I have know. no idea. Uh, but I'm going to check that out. Uh, all right. So, yeah, Jeff knows a little bit about the popping cork. Um, J J JJ, fish, Jason sure. Johnson's on here. What's up, Jason? He said they still work on Lanier. People have forgot about them. Well, they had forgotten about them, 
but now they remembered. Yeah, see, <laughs> see, Cameron just said what I mentioned earlier, you know, a clear spook with a small ice fly behind it. Then I mean, any, anything, you're just using, you know, the walking bait as a casting tool to help you get that little bitty bait out there. And we have, um, we didn't talk about it, but I've seen it in the comments a bunch tonight, rooster tails. Um, I used them back in the day for schooling fish, even used little panther martins. Um, I have caught schooling fish on b- both of those. It's not something I'm honest, honestly, it's not something I carry in my boat much anymore. We got so many different style blade baits now available. Um, but the rooster tail is good because it does cast so far yeah. and it does catch them. I mean, it, it does. A rooster tail, that's, that's a timeless tool. Absolutely. For fishing. Uh, little hair jigs. We didn't get into that tonight, but little bitty marabou yeah. hair jigs can be a big deal. Um, I know that a lot of guys, even <laughs> there's even areas, I know Chick is one, um, where actually stripers get to, to, to key in on those little bitty shad this time of year too. And, and in, in fisheries that they do that, I know guys throw small hair jigs. I'm talking about little bitty, kind of tiny quarter ounce oh, hair yeah. jigs and uh, work them a variety of different ways. Um, but that is that is a big deal. Small hair jigs is a big deal. Uh, there's so many different ways to, and, and we're all guilty of it. We go out there and, and whether Brian and I know 15, 20, or 30 different ways to, to catch one, we usually end up forgetting some of them. We don't try oh, yeah. every single one of them. I can't tell you how many times. <laughs> you get times. frustrated a lot of times. Oh, yeah. How many times <laughs> I've come back from a tournament, you know, in situations where fish were schooling and I couldn't get them to bite and I get back and I open some of my boxes and I find a bait like like one of these baits in here and I'm like, God, I forgot all about that. I didn't have them with me. I should have thrown that. And, you know, that's, that's the cool thing about schooling fishing is it, it's – little tricks can make a big difference and you can really separate yourself from everyone else just by having some of these cool little tricks that everybody doesn't know about um the uh yes jt we've done that quite a bit (laughs) he said do you ever just say i won't say exactly what he said but basically screw it and just pull the trolley motor up i did that a lot at chickamauga (laughs) a lot and actually i got to where i would ride by fish blowing up in the grass yeah, I wouldn't even attempt to slow down. <laughs> they had made me so mad. I was, I was done with them. I, I'm, I'm done. Um, all right, you uh, still nothing used to frustrate me as bad as those schoolers at Lake Wachita, oh, because yeah. they would yeah. they would school here, and then you would look up thirty seconds later, and they'd be a hundred yards away, and then they'd be a hundred yards the other way. It was so hard to find them in <clears throat> in, a, in a centralized area. Right. I, I found them in a couple areas, but it was always creek or pocket related and they but they were still schooling over a 300 yard stretch <clears throat> right right they still wouldn't be in like a 50 by 50 or something like that because it goes back to what you were saying they were only relating to the bait in the channel itself right they weren't relating to a point or a brush pile right. or a ledge or a swing or they something were just like that everywhere correct um those are the ones i caught on the backdrop spoon because <clears throat> i could throw the it uh up. oh derek said have you tried the the plopper 60 I have not. Okay. I've got a 75, a couple 75s, a couple 90s. I don't have a 60 yet, Derek, but I'll uh, definitely have to check it out. We have not tried it, but I think this is the time of year to be rolling yeah, something Yeah, you like would that think out. this would be it. Grayson, 100% said, do you think added pressure like this uh, this year keeps uh, fish from schooling as much? Um, I don't know if it actually stops the schooling as much, as much as it just makes them even harder to catch. Yeah, it just makes them harder to catch. They're going to eat. They're going to school. They got to to survive, but they're just going to get a little bit pickier. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully some of the things we've talked about tonight will help you catch a few. There you go. And not pull your hair out. If, um, if you <clears throat> learn anything from tonight, when you're chasing schooling fish that are kind of nomadically schooling, clear baits have something you can that's small, you can get to them that you can cast a long ways. That's, quick retrieves. Yeah, quick retrieves. Or erratic retrieves. Erratic, something you can throw a long, long ways, and something translucent or clear. Something you think they can't see. Yep. That's what you want. All right, so <clears throat> we I know we, we've already surpassed an hour. Um, we uh, we do have a trivia giveaway tonight. We've got a... Um, do we have a question yet? No. Unless, Y'all are supposed to think Brian of that. Brian wants to ask his. We don't have one yet. Really? You had the whole show to come up with a trip. Yeah, that was your I job. I was supposed to. You had one job, Jeff. <laughs> um, all right, <clears throat> so we have a trivia giveaway. We just don't have a trivia question. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, And they always rely on me for the trivia question. Yeah. So um, you're going to have to answer some questions while I come up with a trivia <laughs> question. What if, what if we just 
have them randomly guess on how many minnows are left in Mr. Wilson's tank. Well, can you can you actually count them, Jeff? It doesn't really matter. They don't. They can't see it, so they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Give us a come up with a number, Jeff, but don't say it. I just count them. All right, write it down. Write it down. This could be the worst trivia question in the history of Let's Talk Fish. <laughs> so let's just let's give them a hint and say we start. What did we start with? Six dozen. We started with five dozen. Five dozen shiners. How many is that, Brian? Five times twelve. That would be sixty. Okay, I just, I just checked your math. Okay. All well, right. So putting him on the spot. <laughs> he got nervous. Started sweating. He, got, he started blushing. I was a little, nervous, a little worried about um, you there. So. The question tonight, <laughs> because, uh, and Thrift came up with this one. so Just now, on the spot. Figure. That's pretty good. Uh, it is for a <laughs> Angler's Choice uh, Angler's Choice Marine. They're giving away another hoodie and a hat. Tonight. We're not accepting answers yet. We're not accepting answers. <laughs> and, and none of these count. Okay, so I'm drawing the line. Y'all stop answering, and we're not going to ask the question. <laughs> because they already know it's a number, and they're throwing numbers out. like all. So let's just put it this way. If any of these... If, we might swap it up on them and ask, like, what's Mr. Wilson's middle name? <clears throat> what is Mr. Wilson's middle name? I don't know. We have to come up with one. <laughs> Who, whoever guesses, whoever, whoever's middle name we vote on is the winner. How about that? Perfect. Okay. Uh, so the funniest funny. one is the one we like, yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, <laughs> all right. We, uh. Well, I better hurry up and answer the question. I mean, ask the question because we're going to get it right. We have not officially asked the question yet. Well, I don't actually, even know what we're giving away. What are we giving away? Kind of we got to come up with another question because we already have a correct answer twice. Well, I've seen it like 17 times. <laughs> okay. okay. we, we got to come up with another. We're giving away an Angler's Choice hat and a hoodie. Okay. Um, Scratch that question. We got a new one. Which is? I don't know. I came up with that one. Your turn. Jimmy Houston, 1983. That is incorrect. Um, I think of something good. This is, I mean, putting me on the spot, I always cut. Jeff, oh, you, come, come on. on, man. You sit there the whole show and play on your little keyboard and sound box, and you don't just hey, give he, us a Hey, we didn't lose question. sound, though. He did good. He did it. Jeff did good. Let's give Jeff a round of applause. I got a question. Good job, Hey, Jeff. No, wait, we're not even going to tell him what it is. You don't have to tell me what it is. You just ask the question. All right, I got I to figure it out first. <laughs> the question or the answer? The answer. Oh, okay, so Jeff has a question. Y'all, uh, most But he minnows, doesn't know the answer? What is the most minnows he's ever eaten in a day? There's over 100. Oh, yeah. Well really? over 100 to answer your question, Sandy. That's a lot. Um, yeah, I would say a minimum of... I mean, I know when Leslie uh, would go pick them up, she'd be like... She'd get it mixed up a little bit, right? She'd be like, no, nah, give me like 14 dozen instead of six dozen. Or they would just give her extra. I think they would give her extra. Okay. <laughs> we're just rambling. I, I really have I no in, idea I what we're in. doing well, right now. Tell them, everybody asked about the deer that Brian shot. How I, many? I did shoot a deer. We actually, I actually said that, Brian. Hey, I only shot it once. The answer was kind of lame this time. He actually only shot this deer one time. Yes. So. And it was a good shot. It was a good shot. Broke both his shoulders down. Got he him. Was, he was bulldozing when he left. Yeah, Matt let me down, but we'll let him slide. Called Matt to come help me drag him. Last time he called me to go help him drag one, a deer wasn't dead and it ran from one county to the next. It did do that. <laughs> now, yeah. that being said, in my defense, my three-year-old daughter was laying across yeah. my chest, yeah, right. sound asleep. So, so Matt, so he Matt got a bow. He called his second choice <laughs> Mr. Andy Montgomery. <laughs> yes, and Andy was kind enough to come help me. Drag said deer out of the woods. Said deer. <laughs> uh, and I was wearing camouflage, and I I, I wasn't in, in the shop stand. So this was a backyard the, deer, 100%. but it was in my wife's grandmother's backyard, not my backyard. <laughs> he, he actually he switched <laughs> it up on him a little bit. He went to somebody else's backyard. Yeah, I, I walked backyard. across the street and went to my grandmother-in-law's backyard. <laughs> said deer. How many points was said deer? He was eight. It's my first buck to ever kill with the crossbow. That's right. That's right. That's right. Where it was. Um, all right. So, uh, what's the? I got the answer. Wait, is that? I uh, sorry, I wrote over it, so I couldn't read it. Uh, you, you is that what it is? Started drawing over it. Yeah. Okay. That's I, it. I, I I doodle a lot, man. 
What's so that? what are we doing? A doodle. A doodle. You know what doodling is? You know, when you're just drawing random stuff. Je- All right, Jeff is going to ask the trivia question. All right, pro- Jeff's got a trivia the question. the first time in the history of FTF. <laughs> um, Jeff's going to ask a trivia question. Therefore, Jeff is in charge of the first answer that comes across the screen. Looks to me, just based off the answer, this is going to take a while. <laughs> it could. Okay. <laughs> okay. Could. Uh, but but the- it's the only thing I can think of that I could come up with something that I've no. Got you. Okay. So the winner uh, will just send us a message on Facebook with the size shirt you wear and your shipping information. We'll get you an English Choice hat <laughs> and an English Choice shirt. Ernie Wallace made a good comment on our last question. What's that? That there actually are still 60 minnows in the tank. Just a lot of them are in Mr. He'd have gotten the trick. Really. He would have got the trick. It was a loaded question, actually. Yep. No, we didn't. We're not even that smart, Ernie. <laughs> yeah. We would have never, yeah. never acknowledged an answer like that. So... <laughs> Today, on the Lunker Text platform, I pushed a deal for prop baits. Prop baits. Well, no. Now, correct yourself. Two walking baits, one prop bait. It was a three-pack. Yes. Appreciate that. No problem. That's what, that's what Brian and I are here for. So I have no idea what you're talking about. It, it, just, it was a three-pack bundle. What kind of bait is that? That is a jerk bait. Right. So how many... What's a Lunker Text? What? <laughs> it's, What's that? It's the... His shirt. It's the text. The text thing. platform that we send ridiculous deals on baits. How? Oh. So I sent a deal today for some head and baits. Three pack top water baits. Just three pack top water baits. Yeah. How many total baits have sold so far today? Individual baits lot. or yeah. individual packs. baits. Individual baits. Individual baits. Yeah. Have sold today. today. All right, this so is Jeff's far. trick question. Man. Oh, okay. I got no I'm idea. I'm getting pricing to already. two minutes ago. Just true. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty That's funny. That's funny, Drew. That's funny. <laughs> oh, me. That's very funny. I like it, Drew. I like it. I won't, I won't repeat it because we don't go politics on this show. Exactly. But, <laughs> but that's a funny comment. Brian, you probably could have just walked without being over. <laughs> All right, so y'all have got – oh, Justin Thomas. Woo, he said 34000 You're going to have to give them, a, I'll give them, I'll give them somewhat a, of a hint because, like I said, this could take a long, long time. In the meantime, I'm going to scroll back through uh, – Catch a question. How many sun drops have you drank this week, Smoke? It's, uh, it's only Tuesday. For the week? Yeah. Okay. Three for the week is the answer to that one, Derek. The most lastest, Isaac shows me, most lastest married fisherman, the most recent married fisherman. So, congrats to our buddy Brian New. I think we told him last week, but he is definitely the. We were going to ask. New a, almost made the trivia question. Yeah. Should we even say that? Is that, is that, is, <laughs> I mean, he did post it. He did post it on his social media. So, the trivia question, and actually, this was Thrift's idea, which I love. The trivia question was going to be. <laughs> how did you say it, Thrift? How many men? How many other men? Yeah. Thrift? You all right in there? Yeah. I said, what did you say? How many other men did yeah. did Thrift? And Thrift. I mean, <laughs> sorry. All right, I'll give you all a hint to get you closer. It's We're rambling. We got to just close it's this. It's over 500. This is getting bad. Over 500. This is bad. Bad. Over five hundred. I know this is going to be a really hard question. Yeah, let's just less than five hundred and fifty. That's I mean over five hundred, less than five fifty. That's just a matter of All time. Right, so now it's I'm about to time. just call a winner. This we is, uh, this is drug said, out way too long. He said, <laughs> this would have been an easy one though, and it would have gone by so fast if we had just said, "How many men did Thrift stay with?" On no, the, not well, Thrift. Right, I mean, no. Not three. Of. You're sitting Why are you talking me. about three? Of. How did you word it? I can't even remember how did you word it. Okay, word it so I don't screw it up again for the third time. No, this is your question. Well, it was your idea. Well, we went with he posted that. It. He posted it. We just got somebody pick a winner. New went on his honeymoon because he had back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back 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 to Thanks for the trivia question, but next time, way hey. too complicated. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna make it good. way too complicated. <laughs> All right, so Justin Brown, congrats! Send us a message with the, <laughs> your shirt size and your shipping information. We'll get you a hat 
and a uh, and a shirt out uh, out in the mail to you here ASAP. And I'm not sure who won last week, but I talked to Trent today. Uh, Dustin Clay is actually counting up from 500. I think I, it's a matter of time. It was easy. <laughs> matter of time. Matter of <laughs> time. Um, so we have a winner. <laughs> if if nobody's aware yet, uh, um, Mr. Brown uh, sent us that information. But uh, Trent is getting last week's winners. Uh, stuff out to them today. He did not get my text with the information until a couple days ago, so he's getting that shipped out. I think he said today, if not tomorrow. Um, but he'll uh, he'll get this other stuff out ASAP. So, interesting show tonight, needless to say. Interesting uh, show. I hope you learned a little bit about school and fishing. I mean, I, I feel like the hardest thing about that is figuring out the different baits and different little tricks. I mean, obviously, finding them is a lot easier than trial catching Trial and error them. a lot of times. Yeah, a lot of times it is trial and error. But think outside the box. Don't get frustrated because I do it all the time. I do too. And um, I do too. <laughs> you know, the other thing is, we showed you a lot of different baits. None of them is a cure all. No. Nope. None of them will catch them back to back to back to back to back cast typically. No. Nope. And you might actually have to have eight or ten different offerings and catch one fish on each, each offering. offering yep. So it's amazing. It's kind of like bed fishing. It is very similar. Yeah. Very similar. <laughs> um, but it, you know, so so. I have a lot of things rigged up. If you know you're going out for a, a, a school and fish day in the fall this time of year, make sure you've got a lot of options on your deck. Um, and watch closely how they react to it. You'll have a lot of fish come up and miss baits constantly, and, and that may be a bait you'll never actually catch one on. Yeah, um, but it could be something as simple as a color change to right. get those fish to commit. And color like change a clear meaning bait. clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's, a, what's, a, what's your jig saying? If you can put a green pumpkin trailer on it, it's the right color jig? Exactly. And if you can throw a clear topwater bait for schooling fish in the fall, it's the right color. <laughs> exactly. If it's not clear, it's not the right color. Right. Okay. Good enough. All right. Perfect. Um, I'll actually be <laughs> headed to Lake Fork this Saturday. Unfortunately, I have to leave on Halloween. So happy early Halloween to everybody. We're going to have a costume show here one one year. We've been talking about doing that. Yeah, you're going to be gone for Halloween. I am going to be gone. Uh, but everybody, happy Halloween. I actually watched It. On- Did you? Have you seen the the, the newest It? Like no, I hadn't seen the new. Version? I don't like scary movies. Really? No, they scare me. You're kind of a. I mean, you're kind of a movie guy too. I I, I, I just I don't like scary movies. Nothing like nothing even like no the none of the Halloween for the Jasons or the Friday. The Ed, Friday yeah, just not my thing. All right. Like the I'm you know the the Halloween movies that are like monster related, like Jason and all that stuff. That don't scare me. Okay. But like when you get like a ghost movie, that that or could a clown. That could be legit. I mean that. Or a clown. Yeah, that might could happen. Clowns are clowns they, are just. They kind of freak me wrong. out a little. I don't don't watch them. Clowns are wrong. Uh, Mike, thanks for joining in as usual. <laughs> uh, the next show, yes. So tentatively, two uh, weeks. Yes, uh, uh, November seventeenth. Mike threw the date out there for us, and I believe if that's a Tuesday, that is correct. That will be. We'll go with it. The Tuesday after I get back from four. Oh no, we might actually. There might be. Let me see here. Let me check. Let me look at my calendar here. Let me just slide in here to the calendar. The 10th. But yeah, actually the 10th. So I should be back on the 8th at the latest, I'm thinking, from Fort. So the 10th should be uh, our next show date. Uh, the 17th for sure. Um, but the 10th, as long as Jeff. I know Jeff's got a redfish cup coming up. That's after. No, that's the, that's the 7th. I mean, the 10th is after. Oh, yeah. That's okay, you're, you're back by then. Yeah. Yeah. I get back on Sundays. And Thrift, you're here. On the 10th of November? Yes. Okay. All right, so we will see y'all November 10th. Uh, We'll have a lot to talk about. We'll talk about the the, the Lake Fork wrap-up, and I'm sure some things will be changing on the water. Thrift will probably be spending some time on the water. Yeah, I'll probably go fishing sometime between now and then. He's going to take a break from deer hunting, so he's got one buck tag left. He's waiting for a break now. Yeah, I'm just kind of hanging out. Just kind of hanging out. Hey, I killed a big one. That's the biggest one I had on camera this year, so that constitutes a big one. I'm sorry. He No, the biggest one is, well, not the biggest rack deer, but the biggest one is that yeah, that messed up goofy. Got guy. a he's got a he's got a big old mature deer that's got five on one side and a big old six. It, six on one. I'm sorry, yeah. that's right. <laughs> he's got six on one side. And if he's and then matched, like a screwy little deal. Yeah, if he other. matched, he'd be actually a six by six, which is rare, hard <laughs> yeah. to find. Uh, <laughs> what do he say? He said you're on his fantasy team again, so don't suck at fork. Me? <laughs> okay, that's another way of saying good luck. No yes, problem. thanks. In Derek. a roundabout way. Appreciate appreciate the the well wishes. Hey, he's pulling for you. Yeah, we're all pulling for <laughs> yeah. you. Um, Matt's right. going to catch him at Fork. I, well, I hope so. Fork is, uh, I, look, I get asked all the time, best favorite lake in the country. Used to be, well, I, I had a lot of different favorites for different reasons, but Fork is probably my favorite for the opportunity to catch a 10-pounder. 
I mean, there's probably more 10 to 14 pound fish in that fishery for its size than any other place in the country. And that lake mm, is... I disagree. Well, now, let, <laughs> let, 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 me, let me prove you wrong. You know, do you know the Share Lunker program, correct? Yes. So that's 13 pounders. Yeah. All right. So the whole state of Texas, big state, lots of big bass, lots mm-hmm. of big, big fisheries. Fork, for multiple years, has accounted for almost 50% of all the Share Lunkers in the entire state. That's a lot. From year to year. Yeah. So on lot. average. Now, not yeah. every year. But so that just goes to show you. But the thing is, like, that's not. 10 pounders, that's 13s. Yeah. That's, which is kind of a different category yeah, of fish. Yeah, that, that's a real big. One. But that being said, there's still a lot of those caught in the whole state of Texas each year. That's true. Uh, there's there's no Texas. doubt about it's it. Texas. Texas Parks and Wildlife does better than do. probably any other state in the country. And that has everything as, to do with it the support. Yeah. That. The funding. The funding yeah. has a lot to do with yeah. that. Um, so, all right, guys, thanks for joining in and gals. And we will see y'all back here on November 10th. Uh, Brian, you want to sign us out? Yeah. So, two weeks. And if you can't go fish, what are we going to do, Jeff?